what was that? No, you're not. Today, Elmo and Rosita are going to leave Oscar alone. Oh, come on, Oscar. We just want to play with you. Andale, please, por favor, please, por favor. Please, por favor hey, please, just forget it. Oh, no, Oscar, what if we play a grouchy game? <laughs> no. What's going on? Well, we, we want Oscar to play with us. But yeah, but Oscar won't. He won't. <laughs> well, uh, Oscar is a grouch, and grouches like to be left alone. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right, and especially today. Oh? So what's so special about today? Well, it just so happens that I'm trying to write a story. It's for a grouchy story contest that I read about in this magazine. True Grouch Magazine. Yeah, it's a great magazine, and whoever writes the truly grouchiest story will have their story put in this magazine and will win a whole dump truck full of trash. Oh, no wonder Oscar wants to write a story. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there's a judge coming here later to hear my story, so I have to hurry up and write it fast. Hmm. So... Now you guys understand why Oscar can't play with you, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> we won't play with you, Oscar. Good. We are going to help you. Yeah, help Oscar. Help me. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, Oscar. We'll be back to help you as soon as we think of a good way. Come on, no. Elmo. Bye, Gordon. Bye. Come on, Oscar. Hey, don't bother. <sighs> well, at least they're not going to play with you. Somebody come and play. Somebody come and play today. Somebody come and smile the smiles and sing the song. It won't take long Somebody come and play today Somebody come and play Somebody come and play my way Somebody come and rhyme the rhymes And laugh the laughs It won't take time Somebody come and play friend Jamal. He's the kid in the red hat. I'd never been there before, and I saw all these different people, and I thought maybe I don't belong here. But everyone seemed so friendly, so I stayed. of the tiger was awesome. I saw a lot of things I'd never seen before, like this African statue. Here's a picture of Jamal's family. That's Jamal's mother. She's a great cook. And that's his brother Tyrone. He thinks he's a rapper. His father thinks he's just normal.
time we sat down to eat, we were all pretty hungry. We had fried chicken, black-eyed peas and rice, sweet potatoes, collard greens, and cornbread. Boy, was I hungry, and nobody thought I would like collard greens. I kind of like spinach, but I love them. The food was so good, I couldn't stop eating. This is Jamal's room. He shares it with his brother. They're both big basketball fans. That's Dr. Martin Luther King. He was a great African-American leader. I really had a great time at Jamal's house. And you know, even though some things are different, a lot of things are just like at my house. On a bright spring day in Central Park, the score was three to two. And though it was a practice game, the fans would cheer and boo. Batter up was heard across the park, for the umpire's voice did boom. A stranger appeared on the field and was given a look of doom. Get off the mound, the players yelled, but the stranger wouldn't move. He wanted to play, that much was clear, but everyone disapproved. Except one boy who said, give him a chance, let's see what he can do. The stranger made a spectacular catch. It seemed he almost flew. The crowd went wild and the stranger smiled as they begged him to remain. And for this reason, he played all season and brought them exceptional fame. And brought them exceptional fame. Wow. Hey, Bert, let's go out and play ball. What do you say, Bert? Oh. Oh, not now, Ernie. I am reading a great book. It's called All About Air. All About Air? Yeah. Hey, just listen to this. Air is all around us, but we can't see it. Hmm? Huh? Wow. Isn't that amazing, Ernie? Yeah, that's amazing, Bert. Can we go out and play ball now? Huh? No, 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 no. I want to I read more about air. Listen, listen hmm. to this. Um, let's see. Uh, one way we know that air is there is when we see it move things. Neat, huh, Ernie? Uh, oh, so, so so air can move things, huh, Bert? Oh, can it move Ooh. things? Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Uh, air moves things like sailboats and kites and pinwheels. And uh, excuse me, Bert. I'm just going to set up this fan right here on the table. Fan? Why, why, I'm not that hot. Oh, no, Bert. You see, you were talking about how air moves things. Yeah. So I thought I'd do a little experiment to see if that's true. An experiment? Experiment. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ernie, that, that, that's terrific. Oh. Hey, 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 you really got interested with this, huh? Sure, wow, Bert. Oh, great. I think it's very, very interesting, Bert. Oh, boy. Now, now, let's just see what happens when I turn this fan on here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Ooh. Now, what happened? Oh, look at that. Oh, hey, Bert, look at that. The pages of your book are being moved by the air from this fan. Hey, you're right, Ernie. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what happens when I turn it up just a little higher. Wait, wait, Ernie! Wait, wait, Ernie! Don't, don't, don't do it, Ernie! Don't, 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 Ernie! Ernie! Ah! Whoa, whoa. Oh, amazing, Bert! Air really can move things. Hey, did you see how the air from that fan moved that book right out of this room? That's incredible, Bert! Hmm. Oh, uh, by the way, Bert, I notice you're not reading anymore. Of course, I'm not reading anymore, Ernie, because that fan blew my book away. Hmm. Well, uh, since you're not reading anymore, Bert, what do you say we, we go, go play, play baseball? baseball? Why not? Wait for me, Bert. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, O, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y and Z. Now I've said my ABC. Won't you sing along with me? A B C D E F G H 
I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Now I know my A B C. Next time, won't you sing with me? Hey. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. I'm rapping. Q R S This is my dog. His name is Happy. Want to know why I called him Happy? Watch. Here, boy. Want a doggy goodie? <laughs> and that's why I call him Happy. Now beat it! I'm huh? trying to write my grouchy story for the contest, huh? Oh, but Oscar, well, we thought of a good way to help you write your story. Yeah, Oscar. Oscar could start the story like this. <coughs> Tell him. Once upon a time, in a far-off kingdom, there lived a beautiful... Oh, you're princess. Oh, princess! <laughs> yeah. What? And her name was Princess Happy, happy. because she was always, always happy. happy. No. <laughs> and she ate ice cream all day long. Oh, yuck. And then one day Princess Happy met a handsome prince. Mm -hmm. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You're making me sick. What's the matter, Aska? Yeah, don't you like our story? Huh? No, like it. I hate it. It's too sweet. A story about a... Beautiful, happy princess who eats ice cream and meets a handsome prince? Why, that would never win a grouchy story contest. Oops. <laughs> 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 You know. Yeah, but too bad we cannot help him. Yeah. Wait a minute, Rosita. What? Elmo knows a way. Elmo and Rosita can still help Oscar write a grouchy story. How? Come on. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Just listen. It's gonna be good. Really? This is a once upon a time Somebody's starting something These are the opening lines Seymour is waking up He's wearing striped pajamas He's jumping out of bed all smiles He yells, this is the beginning Yes, every story has a beginning Over, we can go back and tell it all again. Yes, every story has a beginning end. This is the middle of the story. Here's where we get to the meat. Somebody's up to something. We're on the edge of our seats. Seymour looks out the window. Waves to Mrs. Mazzini. He catches a ride on a friendly pterodactyl. He shouts, this must be the middle. Yes, every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. And when it's over, we can go back and tell it all again. Yes, every story has a beginning, middle, Somebody winds up somewhere. The 
this is the one it's all about. Seymour flies way back in time. He goes into business with some caveman. He runs a very successful frozen yogurt stand. He says it's a happy ending. Yes, every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. And when it's over, we can go back and tell it all again. Yes, every story has a beginning, middle, and an end. Book. Once upon a time. Magazine. The right wig for your pig. Newspaper. Here's the news, weather, sports. Letter. Dear Alexis, come play with me. Okay. Ooh, excuse me. Terribly sorry. Oh, this is a long plane ride. I, I need something to read. Uh, excuse me! Just a moment! Uh, him again. Oh, why do I bump into him everywhere? I yes, go. sir! Uh, oh, oh! You were a traveler. Well, what can I, your furry blue flight attendant, do for you, sir? I'd like something to read, please. Something to read? Okay, sir. Oh, oh, just take a look at that sign over your window and read that. What? Or maybe you cannot read that sign. It says exit, see? I know it says exit. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, then uh, I will give you something else to read. Oh, 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 look. How about our safety instructions there in your seat back pocket? Very handy. Tells you how to fasten your seat belt. I know, I read them. Oh, okay, sir. Uh, how about reading the label in the back of my shirt? Just pull my jacket down. It's I, kind of I, interesting. I, I don't want to read the label in your shirt. All right, do not have to get huffy about it. I have other things for you to read. Well, I should hope so. Yes, I think I have my shopping list in one of my pockets here. No. Somewhere. All right, I'll find then. How about a letter from my Aunt Matilda? It's very personal. No, but no, you... no, no, no. That's not what I'm talking about. I, 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 I don't want to read that. I want to read a newspaper or a magazine. What? Well, why did you not say you wanted to read a newspaper or a magazine? Oh. You, you just said you wanted something to read. If I had known you wanted to read a newspaper or a magazine, then I would have gotten you a newspaper or magazine. That is my job. Well, get me one now. Yes, sir. I'm definitely switching airlines. Uh, sir, 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 sir. Yes? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you see what happens is... Uh, we are all out of newspapers and magazines. Everyone has taken them. You see in the back and the front, they're all reading. Uh, uh, oh, but do not uh, despair. Do not despair. I, Grover, have something else for you to read. Oh, well, what's that? My lips. Sir, get up, get what? up. That's it, get what, up. What are you doing? I'm going to sit down. I'm going to make you nice and comfy. Come, what? come to what? Grover. Hey, what? Oh, boy. Go, ah, now, uh, all you have to do is read uh, my lips. Once upon a time, there was this furry blue monster. Look, you have to look at my face to read my lips. Look at my face. Furry blue monster. Stories up and down the halls. Wonder what's behind them all. Stories that lead to anywhere. Got to ABC, what's there? Got to ABC, decide. Where's the door I haven't tried? ABC, D, east to west. Going on and in a helicopter heading over the hills we're heading to a house I hear howling in that house hello I'll help with my hook hi hippo hey. har, har. H H. The letter H. Do you know what I'm doing with this letter H? 
Let me show you. With the letter H, I can make words like hat and horse. And H can make me feel like a hero. Whoa! He's easy. Another H word is hold. How about heave? <laughs> okay, okay, you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oscar! What is it this time? Well, Oscar said that the story Elmo Rosita made up wasn't grouchy enough for Oscar to enter in the, in the grouchy story contest. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we, we, we asked some grouches to help us think of a grouchy story for you. Yeah, but uh, none of the grouches would help. No. Well, of course the grouches wouldn't help. They're grouches. So, since Elmo Rosita couldn't get any grouches, Elmo Rosita got the next best thing. Grouch Gatiers! <laughs> Oscar! Oscar! We came as soon as we could! Oh, no. <laughs> we heard you have to write a grouchy story fast, so we're here to help you. Right, Grouch Gatiers? Yeah! All right, Grouch Gatiers. Let's think. Ah, uh, what would be a good grouchy story? Mm -hmm. Well, you could do a story about a pair of torn old sneakers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> good, Maxine. <laughs> yeah, and sneakers fall into a big puddle of mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they get ran over by an 18-wheel truck. <laughs> hey, yeah, that'd make a great grouchy story. What do you think, Oscar? Nah, forget it. Hey, Oscar. Oh, yeah, was that story grouchy enough for you? Oh, well, that story was plenty grouchy enough, yeah. Well, then why doesn't Oscar want to use it for Oscar's story? Because I don't want the grouch Grouchketeers to make up a story for me. I'm the author. Who's Arthur? No, no, no. I'm the author of the story. That means I'm the one who writes it, and I don't want any help from anybody. Not from the grouch Grouchketeers, and definitely not you happy monsters. But, Oscar, the grouch Grouchketeers and I want to help you. Yeah! Isn't there anything we can do to help you? Well, yeah, there is. Really? What is it? <laughs> you can go away and leave me alone! <laughs> you heard him, grouch Grouchketeers. Let's go. I love helping people. There we go. Well, thank you, anyway. Bye. Uh, well, oh. Elmo, uh, I yeah. guess we'll just have to wait until Oscar is finished writing his story by himself. Yeah, yeah, uh, Rosita. Yeah, yeah. Oscar, are you finished yet? No! Oh. Oscar's still not finished. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, The Maestro Plays. Written by Bill Martin, Jr. Pictures by Vladimir Radunsky. The Maestro Plays. He plays proudly. He plays loudly. He plays slowly. He plays old. He plays reachingly. He plays beseechingly. He plays flowingly, glowingly, knowingly, showingly, goingly. Now he is playing singingly. He is playing ringingly, wingingly, swingingly, flingingly, tingingly. Faster, faster! He plays busily. He plays busily. He stops. He mops. 
his brow. The maestro begins playing again mildly, but suddenly he's playing wildly. He bows furiously, he dabs, he stabs, he soars, he slaps the strings, he plays trippingly. He plays skipping. He plays sweepingly, leapingly, cheapingly, faster, faster. He plays nippingly, dippingly, zippingly, clippingly, hippingly. <laughs> the concert is over. alarm clock ring The bell woke me up as quick as anything I sure am glad the bell woke me up that way Cause otherwise I might have stayed asleep all day Oh, the bells Listen to the bells Ding-a-ling, hear them ring Everybody listen to the bells With my brother heard the telephone. It went ring, ring, a ding, it wouldn't leave us alone. The bell made me answer and I said, Hello. It was Grandma wanna take me to the picture show. Oh, the bell. Spent the day at school until the final bell. It said the school day was over and the week as well. If that bell hadn't rung, what were we to do? We might have stayed in school all night and all the weekend too. Oh, the bell. Bell rang. Who could it be? It was Grandma, and she brought a present just for me. If we hadn't heard the doorbell, then how sad for all. Cause Grandma'd still be standing out there in the hall. Oh, the bell. Listen to the bell. There 
there's the alarm clock bell. The telephone bell. And the school bell. check on Oscar. What for? Well, you see, he wrote this story for this Grouch magazine before, and uh, I just want to see how he's coming along. Hey, Oscar! Uh, Oscar, did you finish the story yet? Mm -hmm. ah! uh, I guess that's no, honey. No, no, no. 
Many, many years ago in Africa, before television or even books, people would tell each other stories. All sorts of stories about what they saw, about the animals, about the land. People from Africa still tell the stories today. Now they say that all the stories in the world belong to Anansi, the spider. Maybe he'll share one with us. This story is about monkey and baboon and a compromise. That's when you settle the difference by each person agreeing to give something up. It all started one day when all over the jungle you could hear monkey and baboon screaming at one another. It was very unpleasant. A Nancy had to do something. When I found them, they were having a tug of war with the checkerboard. It's my board! screamed one. You stole my checkers! yelled the other. Back and forth it went until they noticed me there. Make him stop, they said together. I told them there must be law and order in the jungle, not to mention peace and quiet. Only the great judge can decide this case, I said. I told them where to find him. I did not tell them. A Nancy was the great judge. I got into my great judge disguise just as Monkey and Baboon arrived. Ah, the famous Checkers case, I said in my most judge-like voice. What we need here is a compromise. In a compromise, you settle a difference by each person giving something up. Therefore, I decree that Monkey shall own the checkerboard and Baboon the checkers, and you are ordered hereafter to compromise instead of fighting. Case closed. To my delight, the compromise idea seemed to work. It's much quieter in the jungle, at least for now. This is my country, the Congo and the continent of Africa. We play a game called bottle cap soccer. We move the marble with the bottle caps as we try to make a goal. We also play dodgeball. My friends try to fill the bottle with sand before I tag them with the ball. but we have the most fun on our scooters. Badunga ding a ding, 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 
Greetings. Oh, oh, hi, Cam. Hola, Cam. Uh, tell me, what are you doing here? Oh. Uh, we're waiting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Waiting? Waiting for what? Well, waiting for Oscar to finish writing. Yeah, he's writing a grouchy story for a contest, and someone is coming to hear it soon, so he has to finish today. Yeah, and if Oscar's story wins, Oscar gets a whole dump truck full of trash. Yeah. Oscar writing a story? That's wonderful. I must find out how many pages his story is. Uh, uh. Oh, what now? They count. Oh, Oscar, want? I heard that you are writing a story. Please tell me how many wonderful pages in your story. Better yet, let me guess. Is it one page? No. Two pages. No. Three pages, four pages, five pages. No, no, no. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten pages? No, 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 no. Eleven pages. No. Twelve, thirteen pages. No, no. Fourteen pages. No. Fifteen? No. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, no, nineteen no, no, pages? No. Don't tell me your story is twenty wonderful pages. No, it's not twenty pages. It's not any pages. Zero pages? That is a very short story. Look, I haven't even started writing it yet because I keep getting interrupted by people like you. How am I supposed to get anything done around here when people keep knocking on my trash can? Excuse me, Oscar, but you really shouldn't be standing around talking to me when you have a story to write. You should stop wasting your time and get back to work. Are you the monster that ate the television? Do I look like I ate a television? Are you the monster that ate the television? Do I look like I ate a television? Then you must be the monster that ate the television. I, uh, I like television. And now, let's join the crew of Spaceship Surprise! as they travel through space in search of new stars and planets. Captain, I may have asked you this before, but 
Why do we always keep traveling from planet to planet? Captain? Captain? Because we love surprises! Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! Didn't I? No. I think we've just landed again, Captain. Another surprise! <laughs> Don't you love it? Let's venture out and be surprised some more. Yes, Captain. Make it so, number two. <laughs> Engage the door. Yes, Captain. Interesting. I wonder where we are. We're here. Yes, but where is here? Good question. Howdy! Is that a hopping hamster? Or am I still dizzy from our landing? I'm a hopping hamster, all right, and I've come to welcome you to the Planet H. The Planet H? You got it. We call it the Planet H on account of how everything here is starting with the letter H. I am Hopalong Hamster, the head honcho here. Oh, I get it. That must be why you have those hula hoops and all these harps. With hair. That's right, because hula hoops, harps, and hair all begin with the letter H. Hmm. This Planet H sure is a surprising place. Oh, and you haven't seen a half of it yet. <laughs> What's that? Oh, oh that's Happy Harry, the hopping haystack. Howdy, Harry. Howdy, hop along. <laughs> a hopping haystack? Gee, what other surprising things do you have here on Planet H? Well, let's see now. We got hens that dance a Hawaiian hula. Send in the hula hens. Hula hens? Well, play the music a little faster, boys. That's it. Look at the girls. Hey, yeah. Oh, that's another thing that we have. Hey, falling out of the heavens. <laughs> that's what we got. Hey, that. okay. anyone else need a little bit more? Hey! Ha, ha, ha. This Planet H is very surprising. You can say that again. Never mind. And so everyone in Planet H danced the Hawaiian hula until it was time to say... Yo, hurry back now, here! Join us again one of these years for another exciting adventure with Spaceship Surprise! There's a letter H <laughs> that you ought to know. <laughs> But add a letter A <laughs> and watch it let go. <laughs> Or add a hip, hip. Or add an A. Hey! Or add an E and then an L and then the letter P. A soul H. 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 Has anybody seen my H? Heroes. H. Hardware. H. Hotel. H. Hairstyles. H. High school. H. Hats. H. Hamburger H. H H H H H H The letter H Hmm a duck Do you know what sound a duck makes? Gentlemen, the poet Sarah Wenko. My name is Sarah Mae Wenko, and I am a poet. I have written a wonderful poem.
you can tell it's a poem because of all the words that I made rhyme every time. <laughs> I call my poem The Bug. Ahem, <clears throat> a poem by Sarah Wankel. The Bug. I saw him on my wall. I watched the little critter crawl. Ugh. Up close, he had these jumpy wings and fuzzy legs with bumpy things. Gross! And worse, he had this prickly hair that stuck out almost everywhere. Nerds! Know what? I think I sort of fear him and maybe shouldn't get too near him. Nuts! It's true. I'll catch him from afar and then I'll put him in a jar. Phew! But he... Just shivered as I stared, and then I realized he was scared of me. Gee. Shucks. I sort of like the little guy. I let him go so he can fly. Good luck. So now I visit him outside, and he seems satisfied. Wow. We're friends. Now every day it's fun to watch him out there in the sun. The and thank you oh boy uh, hi. oh hi susan hi gordon hi gordon say uh has that judge from the grouchy story contest come to hear oscar's story yet not yet no. <laughs> oh, elmo can't wait to hear oscar's story and see if oscar wins a whole dump truck yeah, me too. Oh, I don't think we have to wait much longer. Here comes the judge now. Oh, yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, are you here to judge the Grouchy Story Contest? What's it to you? Well, we've been waiting to hear Oscar's Grouchy Story the whole day. Who cares? Just tell me where it's, uh, Oscar lives. Oh, well, Oscar lives in that kid. Yeah. <laughs> Go away! Whoa, he sounds really grouchy. Look, I thought I told you to... Who are you? Well, if you must know, I'm from True Grouch Magazine. I'm here to listen to your grouchy story. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Oscarito. So tell him your story. We're dying to hear it. <laughs> yeah, Elmo yeah, and Rosita yeah. have been waiting all day. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's hear your story. I don't have a story. You don't? No. I've been trying to write a story all day, but these yucky people who live on this street keep bothering me. First, these two disgustingly sweet monsters tried to help me. They wanted to write a story about a princess and ice cream, and then they brought in the grouch -cateers. They just wouldn't leave me alone. And then Mr. Nosy Neighbor here comes along and bothered me, and then the Count, and then these two again with questions, questions. All day long, it was somebody knocking on my trash can, bothering me, driving me crazy uh, so i couldn't write a grouchy story and now i'm not do you hear me not going to win a dump truck full of trash <laughs> we have a winner we, we do? do oh yes that's the best grouchy story i've ever heard it is oh yeah a story about a grouch trying to write a grouchy story, and he ends up even angrier and grouchier than he was in the beginning. Hey, it's so awful. It's so horrible. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations, Oscar. Yes, 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 yes. Well, so, I, I get a whole dump truck full of trash? That's right. It'll be delivered first thing in the morning. Wow. I can't believe it. I mean, I've dreamt of a day like this, but I never thought it would actually happen to me. Sesame Street was brought to you today by the letter H and by the number 10. 
Sesame Street is a production of the Children's Television Workshop. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, uh. See, Rosita? Elmo knew we could help Oscar with the story. <laughs> yeah, Elmo, he could have done it without us. No. <laughs> we were good. <laughs> and Slimy's spaceship is still on its way back to Sesame Street. Coming soon on Sesame Street. <laughs> I have to keep hiding from Big Bird so he doesn't find out that I broke his car. Oh, oh. When will Luis and Maria get back from lunch and fix this car? Ellie. Uh oh. Huh? Telly. Uh oh. Hmm. I wonder where Telly is. Toodaloo! Funding for Sesame Street is provided in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by public television stations and their contributors. <laughs>